through. Well, Good evening. We're just a couple minutes early, but I think we can go ahead and start. Do we, let's turn this other one off. Yeah. Just for a second. My name is Pam Fox. On behalf of the Northwest Republican Women's Club, I'd like to thank you for coming out to join us tonight. Uh, we're looking forward to meeting each of the candidates here in Summerfield. And we're honored to have everyone, especially the candidates. I like to call the candidates our heroes because they're willing to step out of the box. They're willing to fight for their community. And as we all know, there have been some issues worth fighting for here in Summerfield um, the last few months, seems like a few years, I'm sure, to some of us. But the Northwest Republican Women's Club is part of a state organization, which is also part of a national organization. The North Carolina Federation of Republican Women, and we are committed to providing the education and information that you need to deal with the issues of the day and the tools to be more effective in the challenges ahead. How appropriate is that today? We hope you'll join us at the Northwest Women's Club. We do take males memberships as associate members, and about a third of our members are males. So we would welcome any one of you to join us in our monthly meetings. We have some information for you over here. First of all, I would like to introduce you to our officers for the club. Like I said, my name is Pam Fox. I'm president of our club. Brenda Haywood is our vice president. Marilyn Forrester is our treasurer. Now I'd like for all of our members to stand, if you would. All right, thank you all. And now I'd like to introduce you to some of our uh, Guilford County GOP executives. Chris Meadows is chairman of Guilford County GOP. Vice President. <laughs> Joe Plant is our District 3 Precinct Chair. <laughs> Joe has been very busy. He has just recently taken over this position and he has worked tirelessly in High Point for the elections. We had the, the primaries uh, this past week. We'll do the same thing here. And he, he is just a wonderful addition to our Executive Committee. Now, I would like to introduce our moderator, Lee Haywood. Hello, everybody. He's a longtime resident of Summerfield. Lee was our 2020 Republican nominee for the 6th Congressional District, our 2022 Republican candidate in the 6th District. He is currently Secretary of the Gilbert County Republican Men's Club, Vice President of the Piedmont Region, North Carolina Federation of Republican Men, and he's the former North Carolina Republican Party 6th District Chair. And you forgot the most um, uh, important part. I'm very, very humble with all those positions and all that. Very humble. I carry, I carry right. it on my sleeve. Right. And by the way, Kathy Manning cheated. I would have won that first time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Just saying. All right, we always start our program with the invitation, so. Kathleen Flanagan, if you would lead us in the invitation, please. Uh, I invite you to pray in your faith and tradition as I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for these candidates and those who support them. We ask your blessing on each of them, and I ask you now to put your blessings and take a moment of silence for Israel. God bless each of you, and God bless America. Amen. Brenda Haywood will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, 
pledge to the North Carolina flag. If you have your agenda, the pledge is very short from the back of the agenda. I salute the flag of North Carolina and pledge to the old North State love, loyalty, and faith. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am. Can y'all hear me with this? Yes. All right, about. Am I right with that? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'll yell. I'll, I'll yell. Yeah. Um, I got a loud voice. I'm honored to be the moderator tonight. I know a lot of y'all people, but some of my, some of you, the ones that I don't, I look forward to getting to know y'all later on that this evening. Um, each of these candidates are going to have two minutes. Uh, the timekeeper is going to be Pam. She's going to, when two minutes comes up, she's just going to say two minutes. We're going to have a soft ending. You don't make me, you know, need to finish a thought or anything like that. Go ahead and do it. We're all friends here. Just don't take advantage of it. And uh, so, uh, by the end of all this, I still want us to be friends. If we're friends now, I want us to be friends afterwards. So, uh, we're going to have a soft ending on the questions. Um, there's three spots available for the council. And we have eight candidates. One of them did not uh, was not able to make it tonight. There's uh, two candidates for mayor with one opening for mayor. We're, we can't have two mayors, so uh, we're going to have one uh, one mayor at the end of all this. Uh, but that is going to be uh, uh, Tim Sessoms and uh, and Linda. Let, I tell you what, let's start over here. And uh, Tim, will you introduce yourself? And if you're an incumbent, tell you uh, tell that you're an incumbent. Uh, what's your position? I am Tim Sessoms, and I'm currently the mayor. My name is Linda Wizelkin, and I'm running for mayor. My name is Heath Clay, and I'm running for town council. I'm Lynn Williams Devaney, and I'm currently <laughs> mayor pro tem. Jonathan L. Hamilton for town council. Greg Fox for town council. Reese Walker for town council, and I'm an incumbent as well. Jeff Davis, town council, I'm also an incumbent. Teresa Perryman. Town Council, former from 2017 to 2021. Very good. Don wanted me to remind everybody the bathrooms are down this way. Thank you, Don. You're quite welcome. Right. Right. You so I'm looking at my notes here. Um, I mean, we're going to start off with the mayor's candidates That's down here. We, uh, we're we going to get right into it. And uh, Mayor Sesson, so we thank you for being here. You let us know that you had some other plans tonight. So uh, hang around as long as you can, and if, if you sneak out, we'll understand. So. Uh, um, I'm going to read from the paper the other day. I was able to come to the meeting um, down at the church, and they did a write-up in the paper a couple days later. Let me read this. There remains, however, the uncertain outcome of Summerfield's town election in November, and the possibility that a new council that might not want to negotiate with Couch. Tom Terrell, Couch's attorney, told the news and record that Thursday night's approved text amendment is not the beginning of anything but more uncertainty and trouble. The text amendment makes some small changes and large changes. The town council knows absolutely nothing about real estate development, economics, yet makes changes that have substantive, substantive impacts, Terrell said. There will be a new council in November, and its first act will be to repeal or, or gut this text amendment. Terrell added that the potential new council first act would probably follow lawsuits by angry citizens challenging the text amendment. Um, you want to go first, Mr. Mayor? Um, how do you feel about that? Do you think um, Couch is going to go for those tax amendments? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I should go back to what you read. Yeah. <laughs> and I got a few gonna, minutes to respond to that. We're not going to get into the election, but uh, there were quite a few tax amendments. And I was thinking while that, while Lynn was speaking, uh, is Couch going to go for that or is this going to be a deal breaker? Well, I think it's been very clear over the last four or five months since this whole thing began that uh, it has been their intention to be in it. <clears throat> Witnessed by the fact that Mr. Couch will not come back to the table. Uh, he didn't say it to me, but I've heard that he said that uh, he's gonna leave it to the General Assembly to make the decision. So uh, I think uh, that's what his team wants. They have the opportunity to bring back to their boss a much uh, more robust opportunity for development 
but in a lot more apartments than we've ever talked about. And so uh, when that became apparent, when uh, the word came from Berger, and uh, we hired attorneys, we hired lobbyists, and every single one of those that we've hired have all agreed that this is not a threat, that it is a reality, uh, then we began to respond. Mr. Terrell continues to, uh, you know, say uh, what he will about how terrible what we did was. And we did make some changes that he was not aware of, but uh, we had asked for some concessions from the very beginning after we got his letter. And uh, we never got any of those. And so we put some things in. Uh, I think uh, it, it locked us in. If you do the math, it uh, ends up to be somewhere around 680 apartments. Uh, they never agreed to that, but we put that in, and we put that density number in as well uh, because we didn't hear from them, and both of those numbers were just a tad higher than what Mr. Couch had originally said. So uh, we even did more than they asked, but not only more, but we put that in for some level of protection. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's what's brought us to where we are. So they're still looking for opportunities which is why he said what he said to uh, to get out of this and to try to get the General Assembly to uh, be willing to take the vote to DNX. Very good, and uh, thanks for that explanation, you know, the detailed explanation. I guess now the question is, how far are you willing to go? I mean, at what point are you going to say, go ahead and make DNX? Is it, will, will there be a point where you would say that? I mean, are you in it for, to keep him from DNXing at all costs? Um, I, would, I wouldn't say at all costs because, I, you know, all costs would encompass a lot of different things. Yeah, well. But, um, yes, we're committed to staying at the table. We're committed to seeing this through. Uh, this text amendment as it is, as I said, it does have some limitations in it. Uh, and a whole lot of the things that many people are really <coughs> concerned about don't even come at the text amendment level. They come at the next round after Mr. Couch applies to have his land rezone to the new district and then as we begin from there to uh, put a development agreement in place that's when a lot of the things that folks are really interested in most often a text amendment does not contain uh, a number a density number but uh, we put that in to try to provide some protection as we uh, continue to the next round uh, as long as things are reasonable uh, and reasonable is an objective uh, term or subjective, um, you know, we'll stay in this battle because I feel it's super important to protect the boundaries of Summerfield because if it is the annex, I don't think it'll be uh, the county. I think it will be Greensboro proper right there in the middle of Henson Farms, Henson Forest, and, I, and the number of apartments uh, will have no say, but I guarantee you it'll be a whole lot bigger than what we're looking at currently. <coughs> All right, so you're not, you say that there is a point where you might say, go ahead and do it, but it's, you're not there yet. Is that what I'm hearing? Or well, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, certainly there would be a point. I, I, I haven't identified that point, okay. but uh, right now we're committed to this. We, we say we do it, and, uh, you know, if folks support us, if they understand, which I, I've talked to many people, uh, all kinds of updates, and willing to talk to anybody else, uh, if they'll stay with us and support us, uh, we're willing to see this through because there will be a brighter day on the other side of this for Summerfield and uh, it will be a day where we no longer have to deal with this and a day where we no longer uh, have to deal with uh, you know what comes behind this because there are other organizations that are looking at Summerfield uh, with uh, legal minds in play as well and so we're we're fighting a lot of other additional battles at this same time Linda, the annex or fight? That's a tough question. Um, Do you think they've done a good job? I mean, so no, far, you know, I don't. why not? List them out. Why not? Part of it goes back for years. The current <clears throat> council, the previous councils, where they have just kind of laid this out and ignored it. They procrastinated and they haven't dealt with it correctly. So because of the procrastinations and not negotiating with Mr. Couch and, and his um, village has set it up for now 
and he wants it, he's ready to go for it. This has been going on for years, not just with the current council, but previous councils and previous mayors. So I think that's what's hurt us right now. But we're, we're here where we're at. What would you do? I mean, personally, I mean, it seems like Mr. Sessoms is, uh, Mayor Sessoms is, you know, trying to work his, his angle. What would you do right now? I mean, uh, up against the wall with uh, Senator Berger and David Couch, what would you do? Are you going to negotiate? Are you going to tell them to take a land? If I'm the mayor? Yes, if you're the mayor. I would go back, take all the papers, all the documents, once I'm sworn in, look at them, see what they've agreed to, see what they actually say, get better attorneys, get land use attorneys, get financial people that will work for us and fight for us so that they can go over the documents and we can see exactly what's in it. Then go back to Mr. Couch and his team and say, here's what's laid out. What is it that you want and how can Summerfield negotiate with you properly so that we can save the town, and I don't mean save it like that, but we can come to an agreement so we can he can get some of what he wants, the town can get without giving everything away. And he can pay his way and keep from possibly the annex in it. Well, uh, sorry to say, it seems like they've been trying to do that and Couch isn't coming back. How are you going to draw him back in? There's a new mayor in town. There's a new council in town. Give us an opportunity to talk with you and listen to us and let us listen to you. Let us change. Let us see what we can do. I don't, yes, know, sir, I don't know what our rules are here. Go uh, ahead. Or, yeah, go ahead. Or, well, because I think I just heard her say that, you know, uh, prior she would have passed some type of amendment, some type of zoning to have worked with Mr. Couch, and uh, which is something we've never done in our 10 years of being the mayor, serving on the council, <coughs> working on behalf of the town. We've never done it. So I'd be interested to hear how 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 that could have happened in the last ten years. I didn't say anything about passing anything. Well I thought I'm sorry. Well I thought you said you'd work with him. I said I would look go and look at what documents, all the tax amendments, everything that's happened over the last year, see what's in them, see the documents that the town doesn't know about, then get the attorneys to go through them deeper than what we are because we need to rely on experts to discern what's in there and then see what needs to be done what can be done I'm not going to give away the house and neither is the council so we have to work together to see what's in there and if he's not willing to negotiate then it's going to fall where it's going to fall we can't control that are you willing to let it go yes you are okay. do you know where that point is I mean uh, where would that point be yeah any idea if I'm just saying I mean uh, not being in it right now, yeah. not being the actual mayor and knowing what's been said and the good negotiations that's already gone on. I don't know where Mr. Couch's mindset is, where his attorney's mindsets are. If they're at a, at a wall, then I can't do anything. It's, it's all based on what's been said and promised and done. And then we, as a council, and myself as the mayor can go in with our with our good legal team and see what we can do. That's the best we can do. Yeah, all right. Uh, next question is about water, which is tied to this. Um, him to do what he wants. For what Mr. Couch, for Mr. Couch to do what he wants, he's going to need water. All of this is, is mere speculation without water and possibly sewer. Um, probably sewer too. Can't, can't probably have to have both. That's right. Um, if, if all this should come about and he gets his way, are we? Or should the town help him bring water in? As, as has been mentioned, I think there was a resolution to that um, to that point. I'm gonna let you go first on this, uh, and um, uh, should we be helping him bring water in? That was part of the town's agreement. No. Uh, no. Um, where would? Matt, did you want to Yeah. Can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear? Can y'all hear back there? Well, we're also recording. So Let me project. Yeah. So. No, I don't think we should. The developer's building his development. He should pay for the cost of bringing that water and sewer in there, not the town. We shouldn't be giving it away or paying for it. 
So let me give you a little. Well, uh, excuse me. I don't think he's offered. I don't think he's right now asking. Yeah. For for us to pay for it, but to actually help him bring it in. Actually, I think it's where it's coming. I hate to interrupt you. Yeah. I think that's where it's at right now. Uh, well. Go ahead. When he went um, back in 2017, um, Mr. Couch went to the city of Greensboro asking for water help. And we got the records from it. So in that, at that point, it was like $15,000 to get the water in, um, just in his development area. So back in 2020, he, he got an update on that, and it was over $17 million to get that in there. So. Is Summerfield going to help do that? Are they going to bring it in and provide it? And then what's going to happen at that point? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to take that one step further. We've always talked about water, if nothing else, for fire protection. Ever since we've lived here, me and, me and Brenda have been here 20 years. Um, should we bring, as I guess in the bigger picture, do we need water? Uh, or, or should we stay where we're at with, uh, with everybody happy with their wells and their septic tanks and all that? And leave, and leave the couch out of it, leave, leave his thousand acres out of it. Should, should we explore uh, either town wells or tying into Oak Ridge or Rock, uh, Rock and Amp? What do you think we should do? No, I, I don't think so. We should leave it just exactly like it is. The residents of Summerfield want to maintain their wells and their septic. They don't want it. I don't think we need it. And um, I'm worried about if they bring a large... Um, town water tower, what the effect that's going to have on the wells, and the quality of the water. And that water is only for, uh, it can't be used to drink. So there's a lot more money involved in that, and if it's going to work. I, I don't want it, nor do the residents want it. Mayor says it. Water. I'll be Jeopardy. Could you please put that in the form of <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you want water? I mean, do you see it? First of all, I would love some water right now. But I can't. Does <laughs> anybody have any water for Mayor Sesson? Somebody give him water. Uh, the, the question started off should the town uh, help uh, Baby Couch get water? Should he have his way and do the plan development now? Should we be helping him do that? Guys, well, I would. Uh, well, thank you, sir. Ask each other to see uh, well, I do think that in Mr. Couch's proposal, was when he uh, presented the 1,200 apartments as well as the 600 apartments, that uh, Mr. Couch uh, offered to bring water at no cost to citizens. And uh, citizens would not have to sign on to that water. Uh, if they did, they would have that opportunity. I think primarily, and you are correct, I, his development would require uh, public water and public sewer to, uh, to be able to do it. So, um, so once we go through this process with Mr. Kevin, I'll skip ahead just a little bit. Once we go through this process, and then I want to talk about the, the 5.5 million and the 1.1 million that we have for water currently and what we're doing with that. But I think what um, the process would be is uh, we've had the text amendment, Mr. Council make application.